Take all my cares away You can move mountains I don't have to be afraid For you, I know You are God All things are possible You are God Now can we Step I take for you
Take all my cares away You can move mountains I don't have to be afraid For you, I know You are God in All things are possible You are God in Now can we Step by step.
to be in the house of God this morning. I invite you to stand, and if you are joining us online, good morning to you too. We invite you to stand in your living room and worship with us. Are you ready to worship God today in this place? Let's open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God. You are a good God, and you are so faithful, Lord. So today in this place, as we are gathered here as one body to worship you, I pray you would release a spirit of freedom to worship in this place today. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and move and to come and lead today, God. We love you. We praise you. And all of God's people say, amen and amen. Let's put our hands together, church. Churches alive. Let's sing our hope. Our hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. sounds like and this is what it looks like this is what it feels like when the church is alive oh, oh, oh. Sing it out to this is what it sounds like and this is what it looks like this is what it feels like when the church is alive Churches alive. Our hope, our hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. This is what, this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. Worship him today. Sing, come let us worship. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. Hallelujah. See what? See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Oh, here of heaven, you conquer. 
you free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, I sing your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Chain, oh God, you have done great things. We act in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our sin, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Let's lift him up today, church. In hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah. today church declare it hallelujah god above it all hallelujah god unshakable You do great things. Jesus, you are worthy. Declare one more time. You have done great things. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. do great things. There is nothing impossible with our God, church. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, I bless your holy name, God. Oh, we exalt the name of Jesus. We exalt the name of Jesus. We lift you high today in this place, God. What a wonderful, wonderful God you are, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your love. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your love. What an awesome God you are. What an awesome God you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we praise you today in this place, Lord God. You are a faithful God. You are a good Father. And we bless you today in this place, Lord. We bless you today in this place, God. You know, church, we just sang the lyrics, Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. And we praised him and we acknowledged for everything that he has done, for all that he is doing, and for everything that we are because of Jesus. But we know the story of salvation because it happened. But the people of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago didn't know it fully yet. 
And all throughout the Gospels, all four of them, you'll find the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And in John 12, 13, it says, And they took palm branches and ran out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And God's word throughout is woven greater meaning to Christ's story. And it always directs us back to our need for a savior. Always, because you see as those people were running out with palm branches and praising his name, they didn't know the full story yet. They didn't know what Christ's story was. They didn't know what was about to happen. Because as they were shouting Hosanna, what they were doing was they were hailing Christ as the earthly king they had been waiting for. But God had a completely different plan in store. A completely entirely different plan in store. You see, God's plan was one of love to provide us a way to be saved eternally through Jesus. That was God's plan. And this is why we celebrate this week. This is why we celebrate today. This is why we reflect on this week that's coming up. It's because of Christ's sacrifice and his love and his subsequent victory that you and I have the opportunity to be saved eternally through Jesus. Amen. Amen. What love. What love, church, that God orchestrated this plan for you and me. What love, church, that he orchestrated this plan from the beginning of time to give you an opportunity to know him, to give you an opportunity to be saved eternally through Jesus. What love, what love. Thank God that there is nothing on heaven or on earth that could ever separate you or me from the love that God has for you, church. You can quote that. You can count that as truth. You can count that as fact. God loves you. This is his plan. This was his plan from the beginning of time. Orchestrating this beautiful, specific, detailed, elaborate plan for salvation. So today as we continue to worship, I encourage you to reflect on his love. That as we sing Hosanna in the highest today, your praise is coming from a place of gratitude because you are saved, because of the love that God has for you, because of the way that was made through Jesus for salvation and why we celebrate this week, church, amen. So would you lift up your hands today in this place? Go on and lift up your hands today in this place. Lord, we lift you on high. We declare you are worthy. God, we declare you are holy, Lord. We surrender all praise, all adoration to you, Jesus. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for your love, Lord. What love, what love, Jesus, we praise you. Oh, God, we praise you today in this place. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Jesus, hallelujah, 
church with one voice, sing it out today. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are glory, the praise of your glory, for you are God, good morning. Can we put our hands together and give God glory? Amen. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. That was a powerful worship, right? Amen. Well, if you're here for the first time, of course, uh, probably you were here before and, and uh, when we were on our sabbatical. And if you were here earlier, thank you so much. Can we give God glory for them, please? And those, it's good to be back. Amen. Thank you so much for coming, and, and it's just a privilege for us to, uh, to uh, worship with you. Well, today is a very special Sunday, isn't it? Palm Sunday. Uh, and before I do that, I'd like just to uh, make mention of our pastoral team, the A team, the Dream team, and all those that have kept the, uh, the church functioning because it is, it is God's church. Can we give God glory for everyone? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I'd like to also thank God for our speakers for the past five Sundays. Were you blessed? All right. Amen. 
Of course, we, as uh, Pastor Noel started off, and then uh, our missionary to the Macronesia, Diane Laws, the second Sunday, and then uh, Pastor Cynthia, and then uh, Pastor Eric, and of course, last week was Doc Gilbert. Amen. Can we give God glory? All right. You know, we were just tempted to say, man, you know what? Everything is okay. Let's just extend our sabbatical. You know, we just, uh, we just felt like we were so blessed. We were tuning in, and, and uh, all, all the words are just very, very practical, powerful, anointed, challenging. And I think that's, that's what, how God wants us to be. So today I'm just going to, it's going to be hard for me to, uh, to man, I said, man, it's going to be a challenge. I'm, uh, right now I'm, I'm a little bit shaking because of the, uh, the people that have uh, spoken before. And, of course, it is God's way, right? Well, we, my wife and I, Pastor Gina and I, were in our annual sabbatical. We went off and, uh, to get, be refreshed. And on that journey, we were able to meet with former and uh, members of ALC. We met, uh, first of all, uh, we met the Price. If you know this, remember Price, the Price family? From, uh, they were military. They were, uh, they were stationed here. How many of you remember them, the Price family? All right, some of you are, yes, God bless you. We, had, we met with them in, in, in summer in Texas. And then we had the uh, Fumi and, yeah, Depot. We, we met with them. And with the twins as well. And also we, went, we also met the Jacksons, the uh, Andre uh, Jacksons, Virginia. Virginia. And the family may be there tuning in right now, and we just want to say hi to them. And then we had the, uh, and we renewed our 30-year friendship with a family that when we were stationed in, in uh, Florida, after 30 years, we finally were able to uh, get together. They are friends. It's like we didn't skip a beat. We just met with them. And then, of course, who else did we meet? The Bills, of course. The last one was the, uh, in North Carolina. We went, uh, uh, to, uh, we went with and met with uh, the Bills, Pastor James and Pastor Sharon, which I believe they're encouraged. They might be visiting us shortly. All right. And so I, also I have some good news later, but we just want to confirm if that's going to happen. And also on our way, the uh, last stop was in Hawaii. We uh, had an opportunity uh, to, to fellowship with Ron. I, I'm not sure if uh, the wife is here. Uh, Dolly, is she here? Huh? Oh, she's teaching? Is she here? Where is she? Kids' church. I just want to say that Dolly, your husband, miss, misses you. You have to return back. He, uh, Brother Ron, lost some weight and... And, of course, Marie. You remember Marie? Oh, we miss her, but she's in a good church. We, she ministered to us. She made us some good stuff. And, uh, of course, now we're back. Some people mentioned that I lost weight, right? And I said, Pastor, you're the only one that came back from sabbatical that you lost weight. Well, in, in the natural, of course, when you're on a vacation, all right, in the natural term, you splurge. But when you're a pastor, they call it sabbatical. You're not supposed to gain weight, all right? But the, the real thing about this, may I say this to you, uh, I miss Guam. I miss the food. I, I know I'm going to talk about food now, all right? I love the food in the States, but there is no comparison when it comes to our food. Yeah. I miss our barbecues, uh, Ines's, uh, Joe's, uh, 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 Eric's barbecue. The, uh, the finna Danny, the, the red rice, the uh, chicken and uh, shrimp kilogram. Man, I kid you not. It was just different. And I said, man, I need to go back because my heart, my heart's already established that every time that we eat something in the States, just, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up. And I said, I need to, uh, to get some. And so Marie, guess what? She cooked us some good stuff and we bought it brought in the airport, and I was so embarrassed because I don't want to eat it because everyone in the airport or in the plane might say, hey, we want some more. <laughs> and so I still have some, and uh, Marie's tuning in. Uh, thank you so much, of course, uh, and, and, and it's so good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. <laughs> Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles with you, can you turn them to 
the book of uh, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, verses 24, 28 to 48. Luke, chapter, chapter 19, starting with verse 28 and to 48. All right? And it says here, after telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples as he came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. He sent two disciples ahead and says, go into that village over there. He told them, as you enter, as you enter it, you would see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, he says, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. And as he, as he rode along the crowds, the crowds spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful, wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings or Hosanna on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. Verse 19 it says here, But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying such things like that. And Jesus replied, is this, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as he came closer to Jerusalem, and so the city ahead, he began to weep. And he says, how I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late, and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls, and encircle you and close on you, in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. You enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize when God visited you. Now, if you have a, if you have a pen, please underline that. It says here, because you did not recognize when God visited you. Moving right along, it says, Then Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people, selling animals for sacrifices. And he said to them, The scripture declares, My temple will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. After that, he taught daily in the temple, but the leading priest, the teachers of religious laws, the other leaders of the people began planning how to kill him. But they could not think of nothing because all the people hung on every word he said. Would you please bow your heads for a moment. Father, again, we want to thank you so much. The privilege for us to reflect. And I pray, Father, that your word is alive. Your word is true. Your word is, is, is phenomenal. It is alive. And, and I pray, God, that you will open up our eyes and mind to understand what you have for us. Father, for most of us, we have heard, we have seen, we have read about Palm Sunday and the Holy Week. And sometimes if you're not careful, it is like a routine, routine part of Easter or spring break. And I pray, God, that you will make it come to pass and make it real, make it relevant. In our post-Christian world, I pray, God, that we will always be, have a heart that is soft moldable before you so that we can hear and read you and follow you for the rest of our lives. We give you all glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone will say amen, amen. amen. Give God a glory. <laughs> amen. Today's Palm Sunday, of course, the title of the message is simply reflection on the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. How many of you love parades? Would you raise your hand, please? How many of you do not like parades? I love parades. For the past two years, we didn't have a chance to do that, right? But I believe I just read it that our governor has placed it back on the 21st of July. I think we will have our liberation parade. Amen? 
Amen. Anyone, especially the boys, they would love to have the praise because it's about a celebration. When you see a parade, it's about victory. It's about putting out the best of the community. And, of course, during the parade on July 21st, we have those floats, right? What are they for? To win the best float. To what? To exalt or to lift up their community. And, 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 and of course, that is part of our heritage. Of course, there are other parades, and they aren't called parades. There are processions. Processions, to, and It could be funeral. It could be something else. But the parade itself is something that has, uh, that has a, a unique way that, is, that, that, is, that everyone there seems to celebrate, isn't it? I love parades. I love parades. And this type of parades were also what we have found here. See, when, when Jesus Christ came, he says that he was met with people. Now, the thing about this is this. When we talk about the trifle entry of Jesus Christ, if you're not careful, of course, we know about that, right? That it is the Holy Week. Some people call it spring break, uh, Easter break, so that it's, it's a lull from our, from our routine life. But as Christians as well, if you're not careful, we might miss out on the greatest story that ever has been told. So the question that we need to ask is this. Is the triumphal entry just an accident? Is the triumphal entry just an accident? You just say one day, just Christ got up and said, oh, I need to go there. The Bible says that indeed it is not. It is a plan from the ages that God was very, very direct. And he wasn't saying that, oh, by the way, just like most of us, including myself, sometimes we just wake up in the morning, no plans whatsoever, especially on your sabbatical. You just do whatever you want and then done. Nothing. Kesarasra, whatever will be, will be. Now the disciples were there. And they found miracles. They see miracles. And so there are groups of people. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 22, look at this. In Matthew 20, 16, verse 21 to 22, it says, From the time Jesus began to show his disciples, he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Now listen to this very carefully. A parade. Same people that were there exalting. And it says here, they were exalting Jesus Christ because they saw the miracles happening in their midst. Blinds began to see. People that are crippled began to walk. People that, that are deaf and dumb began to function. And people saw the miracles of multiplication of bread and fish. And so everyone was celebrating because Jesus Christ did it before their eyes. But Jesus Christ has a different, higher level. It was just the beginning. He just wanted to catch your attention. Now, all of us have the privilege of looking back, don't we? We can look at back to the story of the Bible and says, man, if I was there, if I was there, I would not even do this because I know Jesus Christ will do this. But during that time, the celebration is because they did not know Jesus Christ was talking something above and beyond their pay grade. It was something that's, what's going on? What's going on? They just, they just, they were just there. To celebrate. And Jesus Christ, from that point on, they could not understand that he must go to Jerusalem, be crucified, and die. See, many people think that Jesus Christ has come to give them an easy life. As pastors, we are so careful. As a pastor, as an under-shepherd of God's church, I tell people... And I preach God's word saying, when you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, I, I'm, I'm not guaranteeing that your problems will be solved. When you receive Christ, I'm not saying that everything will be okay. You'll be comfortable. No. The word of God says this also. If you love me, if you want to follow me, he says here, deny yourself. And it says what? Carry your cross and follow me. The disciples didn't want to hear that. They were the close group of people. Now, during that time, there were also crowds. Crowds make noise. 
if there's a celebration itself, the crowds will make the difference between competing teams, crowds on those that are winning, crowds on those that are losing, crowds that makes the most noise, sometimes they change the tide. But in this crowd, there are people that can identify perhaps you and I. The crowds who spread their garments and coats and garments. It says here, 1936, they spread their garments on the road. I would imagine these are the same people, perhaps they know someone whose families or neighbors were healed, were fed. And so for them, a garment is something that is important. Now, it's trouble with me for a moment. And you heard it so many times, many pastors. Here comes someone. And you say, what can I give this person? the highest, they would take out their clothes, the back garment, and spread them out. The donkey would step on it. Now, we don't have the same type of maybe daily cleaning. There was no concrete. There was no asphalt. When an animal does his thing, that stays there as a fertilizer. And when someone takes out their garments and put it on the road, that means that is something that is valuable to step on. Crowds who spread palm branches, that's why we call it the palm. And it's that in John, John chapter 12, verse 13. Took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. Palms are very important. They provide shades. In those times when there's time of he, they would go down. But this time, it doesn't matter anymore. Some people will be shouting, yelling. And they say, I cannot give him anything. I don't have my garments. And somebody's neighbors who is in part of the crowd saying, I don't care if he gets mad at me. I'm going to cut off his branches and spread them for my king. I remember the time when we were still, I was not born again. My parents and I would go to church and get this. It's not a, it's a different palm. And when the priest or the pastor would walk by and, and start putting some holy water, they say, my mom and parents and we will shake it off because we want that water to fall. And we would go and, 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 and if the priest or the pastor will see you, and if he likes you, he will put you some more in your face. You will be drenched. Yes. Yes. What happens to the branch? Do we throw them away? No, we don't. Those are holy palm branches. We would go home. And then my dad will get a nail and a hammer and nail them on the wall. By the door. By the crystal ray or Christ the king. And every time for the first few days, we will look and say, yeah, and then because it's holy. And before you know it, you become so accustomed to that. The green palm looks so nice, but it doesn't stay fresh. You know what I'm talking about, right? That will turn brown. And when it turns brown, do you throw it away? No. You wait until the next year. To get a new one, because if you touch that without your parents' permission, you can be, <laughs> right? Why? It was anointed. And it become customary to do that and becomes a routine. Crowds who gave their branches. The third crowd is a crowd who followed and cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Then a multitude went before, and those who followed cried, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Those are the people that will have something that they found out. But there's another crowd. And just like in many churches, in many communities that are just like this, they are the crowd who are just curious sightseers. They are the people. 
that are religious. You can see them. They have the form. They have the words. But they're not there to be changed, to be challenged. They're just there to see people. Unfortunately, there are people just like that, including this church. As a pastor, when you give the word, it is our prayer that it will find good ground. As a church, as a pastor, I say, God, I pray that your children, including me, will become disciples or followers. I don't want us to be adding church as an activity throughout the week that we check off. See, that's not how Christ wants it. He wants to have a relationship. He wants you and I to be so full of his goodness that other people will see there's a change. And I keep challenging myself and our leaders and our pastors, are you growing in grace? You might be in ministries, but has God touched your heart so that there's a change? God doesn't want fans, they say. There are many just like that. There are more than 4,200 religions in the world. But only one rose from the dead. And his name is Jesus. In our postmodern world now, to be a Christian, you have to be nominal. In other words, do 98% of your life and then 2% go to church. No, Jesus Christ doesn't want that. He wants us to lose everything for him. He wants you and me to be a life that is manifesting his goodness and grace. Because there was a sin that has to be forgiven. That's why Jesus Christ came to die for each one of us. Those are the crowds. But there are other people that were there present, not knowing that they are fulfilling the prophecy that God has placed before time. The religious leaders, the chief priests, the scribes, elders, they tried to silence their worship. Rebuke your disciples. Rebuke your followers. They're making such much noise. Church is alive. And if you are alive, and if a bond life church is alive, we make noise. Right? We worship. Because Jesus Christ says, if they stop making noise, the rock, the stone will worship. I don't want the stones. I don't want the rocks. I don't want anyone to worship. If I have the privilege to worship my king, amen, can you imagine if you're in a church and then suddenly everything starts opening? You know, I would imagine all of us would run away (laughs) because he's worthy, worthy of all praises. His leaders are many, but God loves them as well. The Roman soldiers is a different breed of soldiers. These are the hardcore Roman soldiers that have occupied Jerusalem, Israel. Their job is to maintain peace and order at all costs. They're there to to subject the people. Any sort or intention or plan of uprising They'll do it. These are not just what they call men of war. These are professional men of war. They thrive in seeing blood coming out from their enemies. They thrive in spearing the enemy to prove that they are the one, the conquering hero. See, their only weapon to subjugate them is fear. The Roman soldiers are there. To make sure that the kingdom, the Roman kingdom, can continue to flourish. 
Then we see the owners of the donkey. These are the crowd. Look at this. The owners look nice. And sure enough, they were untying it. The owners asked him, why are you untying the colt? Now, before Uber, Lyft, and all the things that we do, perhaps some of you have traveled in the States. Before Uber or for GPS, you have a map, right? When we were young, my wife and I, with kids, would travel from from the States, east and west. My wife and I would launch off driving. We were friends and love. But when she hand, when I hand her the map, we go home enemies. She's my navigator. We didn't have the GPS then. It was hard. Sometimes I don't know. She says, hun, west, east. Hun, if you don't know, turn. And she would say, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to. It was hard. Uber came. Right? Go to your phone. Hotel is over there maybe two hours away. You can book. Now, in this case, perhaps Jesus Christ could be that he talked to the owners before. The owners represent each one of us, us true believers, not those sightseers. The owners represent us because a true believer is willing to give what he has to the Lord. Because he believes that what we have belongs to the Lord, isn't it? I like Dr. Gilbert's message. I like all of them. And he pointed out something about the gift and the fruit of the Spirit. The gifts are given. That's why we have worship. All of us can sing, can play. That's a gift. But the fruit that God is giving us, even though the seed is there, it has to be what? Nurtured. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those develop through time. And so when you have the gift, but your heart is not changed, it's not it's a complete. When our lives are changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, we begin to understand that everything that we have belongs to him. Amen? It is easier for us to give what belongs to him. Why? Because now I know that my God has changed me. So it is easy for me to give what belongs to him. The donkey is an important part. And Zechariah, as a matter of fact, says here, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, rage, uh, rage, Rejoice, O people of Zion, shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. For them, a donkey is, is their means. The God is asking each one of us during this time of reflection. What does he want us to do? What does want God wants you to reflect on? Are we just like those palm branches that I mentioned? After that celebration, you put them in a corner, tack it in, and you just look at it, and then another year will come so that you can place it becomes. A ritual. I do believe God wants us to be changed so that our attitude, our lifestyle, people say truly they are Christians by their love for one another and their community. But there's something that is very telling in Luke chapter 19. It says here in 41, but as he came closer to Jerusalem, and so the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that you, all of you people, would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late. 
and peace is hidden from your eyes. Right now, there are some areas that are in, in war. Pray for Ukraine. But everything that happens in, Jer in Israel is a timeline that all of us must see because they remain as God's apple of his eyes. They are special people. When the Jews rejected Jesus Christ, the floodgate was open for all of us. Amen. We were grafted. We were grafted into God's kingdom by their rejection of the cornerstone. You and I have a privilege to be adopted sons and daughters of the king. Amen. You and I are privileged more than, more than ever. And it continues on and along. They will crush you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone. And that happens when Jerusalem was, was, was conquered. Because it says here, because you did not recognize it when God visited you. Is it possible? Let me ask you. Let us be honest with one another. Is it possible that God will be speaking and we can hear him, but will not listen. Is it possible? Is it possible that God will speak through us through his word, through worship, through circumstances? We know the conviction of the Holy Spirit is so strong, and yet we can set it aside. Doing justice with the people then, I believe it is the same thing. And it says here that you did not recognize it when God visited you. As Christians, the time is upon us. Why did Jesus weep? Well, because Jesus wept for the hardened hearts of God's people. God's word is alive. Remember this. God's word will bring conviction, but not condemnation. The conviction is for us to be drawn closer to him. That's the reason why it says Jesus Christ has come, not to condemn, but for them to be saved. The enemy wants to condemn. Now, his, his trick is this. The enemy will tell you, you are bound by your past. Your past is what makes you who you are. Have you heard that? You cannot amount to anything because your past is this. You have done this. You have committed this. And so, therefore, it is like a big chain of the past that will try to draw you. That is the enemy's way of pulling you down. He will always remind you of your past. Now, on the other hand, Christians are different. Christians are different. Jesus Christ is telling us about our future. Did you see the difference? The enemy will try to drag you down. Jesus Christ will tell you, you ain't seen nothing yet because I have finished. I have died for you. And so you have a future that is so phenomenal that is so overjoyed that you and I can come to church with all the burden we have and say, God, you know my past, you know what I've been through, but I thank God that you did not put that on my account. Jesus Christ died for me. His blood was shed for me. And so therefore, amen, amen, the past may con try to condemn me, but God says it's under the blood. And I have a future set before me. So therefore, as Christians, if we still have the same mentality that the past dictates who we are, put it on the cross and say, God, this is not right. I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, I've committed those sins, but they are forgiven. I have a future that is set before me by my Lord. He's my redeemer. Amen. And so, therefore, whatever the past dictates me to do, 
I have a future that is so bright in Christ because Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for my sins. And I can wake up in the morning with a smile on my face and I say, God, thank you for another day that I can worship you. Thank you, God, that the past can remind me. But God, you've done that. And so therefore, I will worship you in spirit and truth because you have redeemed me. And one day when the trumpet sounds and I'll be with you for eternity, and that will be a grand occasion. Jesus wants us. He wept. He wept. For the past two years, we've been locked down. We have submitted ourselves to the government and says, yes, if that is a scientific method. So we had what I call the online broadcast. The online broadcast helped us. Initially, during the first few weeks, we says, I cannot worship in front of my laptop or my cell phone. And then eventually, we got used to it, saying, man, I don't have to get up early in the morning. I don't have to prepare myself. All I need to do is whatever I am, sit down and began to worship, which is fine. But then after two years, you begin to say, huh, this month, next month, I believe the governor will lift the mask on the outside. Now, incidentally, we were in the States. Nobody wore a mask. If you want to, you can wear. And everything is fine. In April, I believe, right, we had this, the reservation. Now, the reservation is not for you to clamp down on your seat. We just want to be careful. The reason is this. We want you to be comfortable where with your, with your family so that, you know, six feet distance, you're fine, right? But the reservation is not so that if it is closed, it doesn't mean that, oh, I can't go to church anymore, so I'm going online. No, 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 no. That's not the case. The reservation is for us. As we are lifting, we'll be bringing more chairs. Are we lifting up? We are going to. And I am, those that are online on the stage, I know Pastor Joe and the rest of those that are following up, we cannot come here yet. But here's my plea for every one of us. If you're here in Guam, amen. We miss you. Yes. Now we have enough space. We have enough, we have enough chairs. We have space. We have coffee and patience for you. Amen. We are. It is no longer. Yeah. Right? Online is good, but it is for those that are infirm, that are off island. But if you are well, if you are strong, if you can go to work, if you can go anywhere. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Church is where we come together as a group and saying, I will worship my king. I will worship my God. Amen. amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? All right. And Jesus Christ wept for the blindness of God's flock. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus Christ came because there's sin that has to be dealt with. But it doesn't stop there. After forgiveness, it is our transformation of life. Amen. You will be regenerating, will be made holy. And that is the pattern of how God, Jesus Christ wants to save us, but then we grow in grace, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. God calls us the salt of the earth. Amen. We are the salt of the earth. We bring flavor. We and two, we, we begin. And the place that you and I are working at, wherever you are, whether at home or places of businesses or establishments, restaurants, it is not an accident that God has placed you there. Because that place needs the salt that is from heaven. And guess who are those salt? You and me. You and me. You and I are the salty earth. And God wants us 
to impact them for our, for Jesus Christ. And I'm closing with this. Luke chapter 19, verse 44, it says here, because you didn't recognize when God visited you. In other translation, it says, because you did not accept your opportunity for salvation. Jesus Christ is continually talking to each one of us. You are not joining a religion, but change has to come from the inside. Amen? Change has to be come from the inside. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth will speak. And if my heart is not right, chances are eventually what is not right in my heart will come out. And God, if we say that he's our Savior, eventually out of the goodness and the love of God, it will come out. Road to salvation is this. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 says this, that you are saved by grace. By grace you have been saved through faith and done out of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The last one I believe that I, I thank God that should not boast. Religion is man-made, man trying to reach God. That's why there are many religions for 1,200. Religion is man-made trying to reach God his way, my way, the way I'm comfortable. Christianity is different. It's not a religion. God saw us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God reaching down to humanity and you and me. And saying, you cannot do everything. That's why it's by grace. Grace is unmerited favor. And says you cannot buy salvation. You cannot go to a grocery store and say, can I have a dollar worth of salvation? No. God has planned it that way so that none of us can boast. And in judgment day, he can justify himself saying, I have given you all the opportunities. All you need to do is believe. Romans 3.23 also declares this, that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We cannot do enough good. You and I are filthy rags. But there's a good news. Romans 6.20 says this, for the wages of sin is death. Each one of us is a banker. We are accumulating many things that one day we will cash out. Sin will lead to death. No question about it. That's why it says here, but the gift of God, that doesn't make sense. Things that are doing in our lives doesn't make sense with our mind yet mind. Can you imagine? We have a brain and we only use 10% and people try to explain God. How can you explain the one who created our brain to function. How can you explain the one who created the world in his mouth by his word? Creation was made. But the gift of God is eternal life. Gifts are not bought. If I give you a gift and you try to pay it back, oh boy. I'm going to take it back. Because a gift is given. All you need to do is gratitude. John chapter 3, verse 16, verse 17 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Does that tie now to the triumphal entry? People as an earthly, because they are under the Roman Empire, Jesus Christ will come. They show the miracles. They show the healing. They show the everything and says, Jesus Christ, you are going to die to defeat the Roman Empire by the human power. That's what they thought. But Jesus Christ has come not only to do that, because there's a war, spiritual war, because our, fir, our father Adam gave the keys to the enemy and Jesus Christ has to take it back. And on that time, people didn't realize that he's talking about a heavenly kingdom because he says, I can call my father and legions of angels will come. But he did not 
See, Jesus Christ had a purpose. There's no option B for God. Jesus Christ has to die. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, see that again, hears. We can hear. And opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him. What can we do then? If we can not only hear, what can we do? Can I go back and do work? I'm glad that 1 John 1, 9 says this. He says here, if you confess your sins, pastor, are you saying that I have to go to a pastor, I have to go to a priest, I have to go to someone, a psychologist? No, no, no. It says if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness because the blood of Israel will cleanse you from your sin. What is that? In our world system, not everyone is equal. You know that. There are rich people, poor people. I was going to say handsome and more handsome. (laughs) We have that array of people looking up, looking down. Everyone is not equal. But there's one place that all of us are on equal footing. And that is at the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross of Jesus Christ level up everything. The rich, the poor, everyone in between. All you need to do is say, God, I confess. But no one can buy it for you. You can say, my parents are Christian, so therefore I'm okay. No, 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 no. You cannot say that because the word of God says this. Each one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Each one. Each one of us. My friend, parents, children, brothers and sisters, hear me out. This may be the last time. The Lord may come any time. As, as under shepherd, I'm telling you this. We need to take seriously the word of Jesus Christ. That each one of us. Enough of playing games. Enough of the making serious. Enough of us, the church and Christianity is just an activity that we add throughout the week. Jesus Christ bled his blood. Not to make us just comfortable, but for us to be forgiven of our sins. What do we do? Romans 10, verse 9 and 10 says this. If you openly declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mind will speak. The heart and mouth agrees. See, I don't want you to receive Christ because of fear of going to, he- to hell. I'm asking you to receive Christ because you and I understand. The word of God is true and that the Holy Spirit has to bring conviction of our sin. And says, God, here I am. That God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart and you are made right with God. And it's by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Declaring. There is no such thing as secret Christians. The moment you do it now, it's not just a one-time deal. That's why you and I must make and do the right thing. And saying, God, the cost is great. Does that mean that you may have... To do something change in your life? Of course, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Does that mean that there are things that I need to give up? Of course, that's what the cost. But you and I cannot do it on our own. Amen. And thank God for the grace of God. That it is only through the Holy Spirit's power that is living in us. That can do those things. Don't worry about that. But in the meantime. Let's settle as the worship team comes. Let's settle. Amen. Let's settle. What's it? Let's settle. And says, God, just like me, am I living right? Isn't it? Am I doing the right thing? Am I, or am I just a sightseer or someone that is just taking a walk but never committing?
Let's pray. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, again, we thank you. In this time that we have a reflection throughout the week, I pray, God, that you would start with us. That our hearts, oh God, will be so open before you. That God, your word, Jesus Christ, it was not an accident. It was planned. God has planned it for each one of us. While every heads are bound, as I closed. Every time I have an opportunity to preach a word and end this with this. But today is going to be different. Perhaps you have received Christ before. But the fruits are not there. Perhaps you have never received Christ and you're just going along. It is my prayer today that today will be different. That you will say, God, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be someone that is, that is not doing what is right. I may be in worship. I may be somewhere else. But God, today, I want to make things right. Is that okay with you? If you're not sure you're saved, if you are not sure, perhaps you received Christ because you were fearful, that is not right. That is not the way. You and I must receive Christ because we understand that we are sinners. He died for us. I cannot do anything. My sins are before him, but I will give them before the cross and say, God, forgive me. And to follow him the rest of my life. That takes boldness. That takes faith. That takes tenacity. Saying, God, I have count the cost. Today, I'll make that commitment. And it's not going to be easy. But you will help me. If that is your prayer this morning, I'm going to ask you, to stand where you are. Stand where you are. Don't worry about the rest. Stand where you are. Just stand. Stand where you are. If you, if you want to rededicate your life, stand where I'm not going to ask you to, to, uh, to come up here, but close your eyes. Everybody close their eyes. Stand where you are. And today, if you're not sure about your, your position in Christ, just follow these prayers. Are you ready? Are you ready to commit? Are you ready to follow Christ? Are you ready to say, God, I understand that you love me. Forgive me. Amen? Let us pray. Father, make this loud and clear in this sanctuary. Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. Guilty of separation from you. I have made bad mistakes, bad decisions, did things that I'm not proud of. I have sinned against you. I confess before you, I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus Christ died for me. He took my place at Calvary. His blood was shed for the payment of my sins. I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Jesus, I open my heart and I invite you to be my Savior. Jesus, I accept you right now this moment as my Savior and my Lord. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins and cleansing me from all unrighteousness. I am a new creation. I am a new person in Christ. Everything is new. Everything is becoming new. 
I am now an adopted child of the King. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray. You know our hearts. You know who we are. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for accepting them as your children. And I pray, God, as they walk in the newness of Christ, I pray that the Holy Spirit will give them the power, the victory to overcome the effect of sin in their lives. And I pray, God, that if the enemy reminds them of their past, Lord, remind your children of who they are in Christ. Their position has changed. They are forgiven of their sins. A new beginning has started. A new life in Christ, full of victory, full of joy and gladness in spite of difficulties. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we give you all glory and honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's sing the song. Amen. We worship you, God, today, and we are careful to give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, amen. amen. You may be seated. Before Howie comes up for the announcement, I just want to acknowledge uh, several people, of course, Brother Tito and uh, Priscilla. They're here. Are they here? Kind of wave. God bless you. And all those that 
that attended, but when, when, when we were gone, would you please, if you don't mind, just stick around. We just want to say hi to you. Is that okay? God bless you. Amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together one more time for God's word this morning? Yeah, and if it's your first time here at Abundant Life Church, we want to welcome you. On behalf of Pastor Albert, Pastor Judy, and the whole Abundant Life Church, can we put our hands together for all our first time guests? Yeah, look around. And uh, here at the island of Guam, we love to say half a day. So turn to your neighbor and say half a day. Yeah, and all those first time, if you have a lay, if you're wearing a lay right now, um, if you look to the back right here to my left hand, left hand side, it says first time see me. Yes, uh, right after service, if you can, just see Leia, beautiful Leia right there. Um, <laughs> there is a conference room. Uh, we're going to be welcoming you guys, so we want to make sure you guys are comfortable and, you know, you feel, you feel welcome. And we got the best, like Pastor said, we got the best coffee and the best pastries on the island of Guam. You can never find this anywhere else in the world but the island of Guam, specifically in a Life Church. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, so hope, well, hopefully we get to see you guys uh, more often, yeah? Well, on to our announcements. But before I get to our, our main announcements, uh, first off, if you are part of the ALC ROTV ministry, which is the uh, media and, you know, Facebook and all that, uh, cameras, please, there is a meeting right after service, if you can just see Pastor Noel, and uh, you guys going to be having a meeting right after service, yeah? All right, now on to our announcements, it's going to be a lot of announcements, so please uh, break out your, your phones and calendars and write these down because these are important dates. First off, this coming Friday, we have a service called Good Friday. Uh, it's going to be at 7 p.m. So April 15th, which is this coming Friday, we have Good Friday. Service will be at 7 p.m. But here at the Bun Life Church, we like to be 30 minutes early. So we're going to be here 6.30, yeah? All right. And I believe reservation. Do we have to make reservations? Yes, with Leia. Res reserve online with Leia. Yeah. And then we have Crossfire Ministry. There is a scavenger hunt, which will be this coming Saturday. All those ages 13 to 18, we're going to be having a scavenger hunt. It's going to be fun. Our meeting place will be at Ducetani Beach Resort. will be from 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock p.m. And it's open to all youth ages 13 to 18. And I believe there's a QR code in the back. You just scan it and it'll, you know, you have to reserve online so we know who's coming on that scavenger hunt. And then... On Sunday, it'll be, it'll be a sunrise, a resurrection sunrise service, which will be at 6 a.m. All right, 6 a.m. Woohoo! Yeah, 6 a.m. Yeah, usually we're here at 8 o'clock a.m., but this time we're going to be here 6 a.m. because we're going to watch the sunrise. And, it's, and if, you, if you're going to be here, it's going to rise from the back of the just kidding. It would be nice though, right? But yeah, sunrise service will be at 6 a.m. A.M. So get up at 4 o'clock A.M., devotion, get ready, get your family ready, and bam, be here by 6 o'clock A.M. And then right after that will be a sunrise service breakfast. Woo-hoo! Yeah. So right after that, we're going to be having breakfast. And if you want to show off your cooking skills, you want to bring something, hey, by all means, you're more than welcome to bring something, uh, you know, from wherever island you're from or wherever place you're from. That will be great. So, yeah, uh, sign-up sheet will be in the back. Uh, it'll be available in the foyer. So if you want to write whatever you're bringing, by all means, you're welcome to. And then on that same day, we're going to be having an Easter egg hunt. It's going to be all the ages 0 to 9. <laughs> Maybe 1 to 9, not 0. 1 to 9, yeah. We're going we're gonna to have an Easter egg hunt for them. I don't know if there's going to be one for the adults. Going to be one for the adults. Would you guys like one? <laughs> Would be fun, right? Yeah. We see the real true colors of, of this kidding. <laughs> like, hey, that's my egg. That's my egg. <laughs> that would be fun, though. But, yeah, Easter egg hunt for the kids. Uh, it'll be right after. And then they're going to be having also their own breakfast. So if you don't like the breakfast for the adults, you can go check out the kids. <laughs> <at> the breakfast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, yeah, the kids will be having their own breakfast as well. And then can we put our hands together for all our birthday <laughs> celebrants for the month of April? Happy birthday from Abundant Life Church. If your name is not up there, please come see me and we'll put it up there. Uh, yeah. 
And then we have intercessory prayer. It'll be on Friday nights, every Friday night, 7.30 p.m. But again, this, this Friday night, there are going to be no intercessory prayer because we have the Good Friday service. And then Crossfire Ministry is also every Friday night, all those ages 13 to 18. You're more than welcome to join us every Friday night, 7.30 p.m. here at Abundant Life Church. And then uh, Young Adults. Young Adults is... Uh, every, once a month, uh, just see Pastor Brian, all those ages, 19 to 35, you're more than welcome to join us as well. Don Watch, Don Watch is from uh, Monday to Saturday, 6 a.m. Every morning they're here praying, so if you want to be a part of that, you also can. And then all those online, you can reserve online if you want to join us physically, you can. Reservations are open every Monday morning, 8 o'clock a.m., and you can also give online. Um, scan our QR code, direct you to our page, and give to PayPal, credit card, or any other way made available for you. Those of us here phys physically, we got the, the Laddie Stones, and then we got the silver boxes in the sanctuary and in the foyer. And then finally, practice social distancing. Those are your announcements this morning. You all want to be blessed this morning? Yeah, let's all stand, and we will pray for our Titan offering. God, we thank you again for your word, your worship. Uh, thank you for this time that we to uh, give back what already belongs to you. Would you continue to bless your people as they continue to sow into your kingdom? We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can come on up to the front and uh, give your offering. Thank you.